Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everybody. Tyler Davenport here in the Great Northwest, uh, online tonight with uh, with Mr. Dave Kelso and soon to be Jay Larson. I hope uh, we've been having a little problem on uh, Skype here. It's probably me at the controls uh, causing Mercury, the problem. Mercury retrograde. Uh, yeah, dealing. <laughs> Dealing with uh, Skype on Ubuntu Linux. Uh, there he is right there. Let's see if we can't get him in here. Uh, let me pop this in here and see what's going on. Jay, is that you? Yes. Yeah, I'm, we I'm are trying. on the air live with uh, Dave Chetso and Jay Larson uh, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, on Maiden Voyage Ministries, which is uh, kind of odd. I haven't done a show on Maiden Voyage in a while, and I've been getting a lot of requests to come back to Maiden Voyage, and here we are tonight live on Blog Talk Radio International, coming to you from Skype, yeah, live.com, which uh, I want to encourage all of you all to get Skype. I didn't know that this day and age of great technology, that there were so many people that have not even heard of Skype, but that's something that I need to get through my head, is just because we know a lot of things, or this or that or the other, doesn't mean that you do, and that's something that I'm going to have to quit generalizing on. Uh, I do it a lot. I mean, there's there's so I many people. Tyler generalized? Here. No. Well, never. there's you know there's so many people that are not even computer savvy, and uh, I just keep forgetting in this day and time, there are still literally I don't know millions of people out there that just don't know how to use a computer, and they barely are able to get on Facebook, and then they really don't know even what to do with that. So that's something that I'm going to have to keep banging into my head. And, and Dave, I know you are you're, you're guilty too. I mean, we we tend to think in this day and age that pretty much everybody's a computer guru, you know, or at least knows how to whiz their way around the net. And that's just not true. You know what I mean? It's it's and, easy well, to think I, that. Well, I'm, I'm definitely I'm de- I've, as a tech, I'm actually never under that assumption because. Worldview paradigms have a lot to do with that, too. Just when we insist upon the illusion of difficulty, we can take something that's very simple and overcomplicate it for ourselves. Um, The main problem that people have is the age-old stigma that goes back to the 90s and the 80s that, oh, computers are supposed to be uber complicated and blah, blah, blah. This day and age, they're very easy. I mean, people just got to get it through their heads. You don't have to be a tech or a programmer it's kind of like a car you don't have to be an automotive technician in order to just be able to drive the damn thing and change the oil yeah uh ladies and gentlemen i want to say that uh i came on tonight um to talk a little bit about uh faith and fear uh, you know, the, there's a lot of faith out there. There's a lot of fear out there, and you, when you mix a lot of fear with a lot of faith, it really waters things down, and it just becomes yeah. like an "I love, I love you" that's said over and over and over again, where your spouse doesn't even hear it after a while, like <laughs> the train running down the track or the clock ticking. I wanted to come on the air tonight, and, um, and number one, let everyone know that um, my bark is a lot worse than my bite. Uh, A lot of you have been talking to me and coming back to my Facebook page and coming back to our platforms and networks and you know you've all come back and said you know when I first uh, started listening to you Kyler I really thought you were crazy and outlandish and outspoken and I still do by the way but you've taught (laughs) me a lot you've taught me a lot about being outspoken and about saying what's on your mind and about not holding things back And actually, I've strengthened a lot of people out there, and I've made a lot of people stop and think about just how uh, lukewarm it is and how meaningless it is not to say what's on your mind and to hold things back. And uh, some people are tactful, and some people are not very tactful. I'm not one of the tactful ones, but I will tell you that I I do believe in God. This is Maiden Voyage Ministries tonight, and this, this is what I came to talk about tonight is I do believe in God. Uh, I don't like that word higher power, but I will say that I do believe in a higher power. Uh, AA uses that word a lot. I used to go around and around and around with them because they would not confess the word God or they would not confess the word Jesus Christ or even allow the word Jesus Christ to be brought up in an AA meeting. They would literally throw you out on your ear in the South if you even mentioned the blood of Jesus Christ. 
So mm-hmm. we went around and around and around for a long time with those organizations because I had a lot of friends who were uh, AA members, and uh, they were having a lot of trouble with it. So anyway, well, I didn't come on like the air to talk about. Well, like the term higher power. You could also you could just use the term the creator. I don't think any religion is going to dispute that. Well, you'd be surprised. The Pentecostals would throw you in jail. But I mean, it's really? you know, it's not. Yeah, it's not. You know, it's it's so it's so complex. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about tonight is the complexity. We've turned, you know, there's so many religions. There's 17,000 languages on the planet today. And, you know, that's a lot of different languages with a lot of different viewpoints and a lot of different uh, vectors, if you will, uh, (laughs) mathematically speaking, and uh, a lot of different perspectives out there. So when you consider 17,000 languages and when you consider over 2,700 religions, and that's not including the sub-religions and the cults. Yeah, uh, there's over over 40,000 different denominations of Christianity alone. (laughs) Yeah, but you're you're, you're talking about a lot of different uh, opinions, a lot of different hypotheses, a lot of different theories, a lot of different definitions. And it's really difficult for anyone to get a handle on this thing. It's, it's uh, you know, I was telling you guys back in the old days, in the 60s, you know, we, we lived a very simple life. You know, we went to school, we went to church, we came home and had Sunday dinner, uh, we rode horses, we went fishing, and we knew kind of where we were going, kind of where we'd been, and we kind of basically had a pretty good grasp of where we where we were at at the time. And now into the internet those, using real logs while trying to avoid the T Rex. Yeah, and all of those things nowadays have kind of just gone out the window. It's it's like there's just too much information out there for the average person, especially older people, senior citizens, to grasp or even want to grasp. And then you have the younger people, say age uh, eleven to sixteen who are just so confused and screwed up and twisted and, you know, their minds are so perverted already because they've been brought into this particular uh, culture in the United States that I say, okay, well, the time you're born, you're, you traded your birth certificate for a million or two or three or four or five million dollars worth of debt that the government's borrowing on you at the Fed. You know, the minute you're born, they take your birth certificate and they mix it with all the birth certificates of that week and they take it over to the Fed and they borrow a hundred zillion dollars on your labor that you're going to put forth over your lifetime. Now this is a pretty interesting thing. And if you'll research this on the internet, you'll see that this is the case. Um I've so, researched you know, people, it on the internet and it is the case. Yeah, and pretty people they, are they pretty do screwed that in up, Canada so. too, did you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All all governments try their best to uh trade the the birth certificates for the for the future uh labor and it works, you know. But anyway, that's not what we came to talk about tonight. What I came to talk about tonight was it it it's good for all of you Christians who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as personal savior and who believe in God and who read your Bible and have your Sunday dinners and have your families over and just live a simple life. Many of you think that I think that's just insane and crazy and nuts and all of you ought to be out in the street hooping and hollering and running and protesting and occupying and that's not the case at all. That's not what I think. I, I admire those of you who are not me, who do not think like I do. I admire those of you who are not in the position that I'm in. I admire those of you who do not have the personality that I do, the type A, get it done now, let's go personality, you know, uh, because obviously I have a lot of PTSD. I have a lot of uh, Going 90 miles an hour into the brick wall and then wondering what happened. But that is just the business. That is just the nature of the beast. You know, we all have our gifts. Dave and I have talked about this. Jay and I have talked about this. We all have our gifts, and the object here is to try to get along. That's that's the that's the object, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come on the air tonight uh, during this two hours. I want to talk about how we're not getting along, how we think we're getting along, but we're not getting along at all. There's just too many people doing too many things, and we're too scattered out, and there's too many different religions, and too many different cultures, and too many different experiences, mm-hmm. and too many different perspectives and you're not ever going to get everyone on the same page. Uh, well, with, Tyler, with, to, be, with, to be fair, 
there's a lot of people getting along and a lot of people not, you know, for, for yeah. every, uh, pa- for every paradigm you can think of, you know, there's an existence for it. So there's people getting and there's along, a... there's people not getting along. There's people that don't know whether to get along or not. There's all different, you know, spectrums. It's and not what, just I, black and black. what I want to, yeah. And what I want to do tonight is try to bring that, uh, get out of that circular argument, as I call it, and try to get, yeah. Some consent- Try to get some Break kind of uh, yeah, this yeah. and that attitude, not a this or that. As a matter of fact, because I tend to to basically fly in circles of people who do get along. You know what? One of the the biggest things that can sometimes uh, stress that type of group of people the hell out, the ones that do get along, trying to figure out how to show the rest of the people who aren't getting along that not only is it easy to get along, but it's more efficient. Um, You know, people have been taught, you know, raised in this, what you might call a subtraction and division economy. And they think that a addition and multiplication attitude is ludicrous and ridiculous but that's like saying two plus two equals one or you know ten times thirty equals twelve or something that's it's really ridiculous and illogical because the more we quote unquote grow up the more childish we become and the more caught in our behaviors and, and patterns and what you put energy into grows so if you're putting energy into being combative and competitive and adversarial and hostile, you're just going to get better and better and better at doing that. And the longer you're in a certain paradigm, it's, you know, like you mentioned already, it's more difficult to unlearn and, and, and relearn. Um, so, I mean, one of the the main conundrums is, you know, trying to figure out how to get these other people to, understand that getting along is possible and as you and I discussed um I think it was uh last night the night before something like that um yeah. you can't convince anybody of anything especially not by force the only thing you could do is like Gandhi said be the change you want to create be that example yeah. of what's possible be the elephant in the room because people in their paradigms are like okay they have these certain rules that they set up for their reality, reality being a quantum hologram anyway, and they have these assumptions set up. If I put out this, I can only get back that reflection. So like if people think, uh, you know, people suck and all people are going to do is be mean to me, so when I raise hell and bitch and gripe about this, then people are going to raise hell back and that's the way it is. And just like you've also done on, uh, you know, on the air and other places many times yourself, Kyler, when someone does that, you give them a different reflection. You be yeah. that example, that elephant in the room. So now they got to shut up and stop and think about themselves because you've literally violated the laws of their universe. You gave them a positive reflection when all their thinking says you should have given them a negative. So then they got to stop and think, why did that happen? And that's really what wakes people up more than – like you said, hooping and hollering and get out there and saying, "Are oh, you, you fuckers!" You're uh, yep, 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 yep. I wanted That's to say, awesome. let's respect, let's respect maiden voice tonight, and all of us keep our tongues, uh, uh, keep our tongues, uh, and not use profanity on this God. This is my God channel, so let's all, okay. me, me, me included. Yeah, um, fracking. We'll just pass a little gas tonight. We'll call it fracking. Well, yeah, I've got a lot of wonderful people <laughs> out there who don't who are not into profanity, and I don't want them to leave us. I don't want them to hang up. Uh, but they do know me, and they do know that I will respect that tonight. Um, yeah, I agree, then Dave, I 100%. I respect that, too. I respect that, and I, I agree with what you said. And, you know, there's nights that I lay here and I pray. You know, people want to know about me. They want to know about Kyler Davenport. There's nights that I lay here in the bed and I pray. Mary goes to work at 11, and then I get back down the mountain about 11.07, believe it or not, uh, slow down, Kyler. Uh, but, you know, the deer running out in front of me sometimes slows me down, wild turkeys. But I come back home, and I'll lay here, and I'll just pray, you know, and I'll ask God to please, please just give me a sign, you know. Please just show me something, and please 
please tell me that I'm not praying to a wall or to an empty spot, you know. And I know that many people in my audience do that. They email me and tell me that they do the same thing, you know, even Christians, hey, even hey, preachers. Tyler? Yeah. Question. Am I allowed to get a little um, esoteric and quantum physical, or uh, should not, I not, not go there with this not, particular not, group? Not too heavy tonight. We've got a lot of our seniors with us tonight, and I want to just kind of okay. be sweet grandma grandpa tonight. But I pray and ask the Lord to, to help me because I grew up in that culture, and I grew up in vacation Bible school and church and Sunday school, and and I'm proud of that, and I'm thankful for that. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. I'm not justifying it. I'm just telling you that to me there's nothing wrong with that. And I've, as I've gotten older, I've gotten wiser in a lot of ways, and I've also gotten stupid in a lot of ways, you know, because I, I left my, my roots. I left my culture of Sunday school. I left my culture of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians 1 and 2, and Ephesians. And I left the vacation Bible school mentality that God is going to be there for us and he's going to take care of us and that that all is well, you know, let God well, work the difficulty it, stuff yeah, out. Go ahead, yeah. Dave. When it comes to looking for a sign, an old saying comes to mind, praying is talking to God, meditation is listening. People always yes, forget I, about the I, listening part. <laughs> well, they, they do, they do. They're so busy asking for that new car and that new home and for Susie to get her blue ribbon at the football game on Monday and, for Bobby to get a blue ribbon at the soccer game. You know, it's just people People use God like a genie. You know, a lot of people do. Even Christians who have been in church for a long time, they'll pray oh, yeah. things like, oh, Lord, please tell me at work tomorrow to get a raise. And, Lord, when I get home, please let my husband have that new car in the driveway that we've been praying for. And, Lord, please just give us a bigger house. We need a four-bedroom instead of a three. And, Lord, those jet skis look so nice at the store the other day. You know, it's just like Santa Claus. And, yeah. and damn it, I, I went to a Buddhist, you know, I go to my Buddhist retreats up here, and, you know, Nameo Horinkeo, Nameo Horinkeo, please give me a new car, please give me a new home, please give me this, please give me that. It's all, everybody's sitting around with their wish list, and I'm thinking, yeah. look, <laughs> whoa, here, whoa, people, let's back up. Yeah, um, the universe ain't this, the quantum version of the home shopping network. <laughs> you yeah, know, this what's is up? <laughs> ridiculous, you know. Let's just thank the Lord and leave it at that. Let's just thank the Lord, you know, and... And people look at me and they're like, well, thank the Lord for what? you got to thank him for something. And I go, no, you don't. And they go, well, whoa, you can, don't. Can and I, I go, can, yeah. Go ahead. Can I, can I uh, remind everybody of what, um, what Jesus said about um, exactly what all you're talking about there? Sure. When Jesus gave us the Lord's Prayer, he said, the Lord already knows that which you need, so this is how you should pray. Notice the Lord's prayer is a prayer of thanks. Yes. Because what Jesus understood, because remember, God granted all of us the gift of free will. And so the reason Jesus was all about unconditional love and being kind to your neighbor and so on and so forth is, I mean, even the physics embedded in every atom. Points to what you put out, you get bad. So if you're all, oh, oh, please, God, I don't have this and I don't have that. And if, if you're in a particularly good mood today, maybe you can grant this miserable sinner this or that or whatever, then God respects your free will. Hmm. And what, you're, what people don't realize that they're saying when they do that is they're actually – putting out an affirmation of, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. And God is not going to step in and usurp your free will. God gave that to you as a gift, and he's not going to give it to you and then be like, ah, just kidding, take it away, you know. Right. He's not going to do that. Fools. April He's going to respect yeah. your free will. So if you keep yeah. affirming to yourself about how bad everything is, you're going to get that back. But if you're in a state of, thankfulness, even scientists have realized that thankfulness and its opposite are a frequency that you're that you're emanating and that's how the what you put out you get back thing works. Um you could call that the Holy Spirit, you know, you can call that whatever you want, but it is proven to work whether you're looking at it spiritually, scientifically, whatever. It's one of the things that you agree I on. Guess you... I guess you saw the piece I wrote today about some of my past again, and uh, I had a woman, uh, 
had a woman email me and say, oh, my God, you know, I've known you all this time, and I, I had no idea that you'd been in blood up to your, you know, waist, and I had no idea you'd worked all these plane crashes, and I had no idea that you'd been in the morgue and burned all these bodies and embalmed all these bodies and started at 14 years old, and I had no idea that you'd you'd picked up all those yeah. body parts and heads and arms and legs, and, yeah. I, you know, and she's like, I just yeah. don't know. We don't know each other on this thing. We we, we, we we judge people, and and I feel like crying, she said, because I, I thought you were just... I would like to get just... to Jesus' main point, though. Well, go ahead. I was going to bring up, okay. but you brought you brought something interesting up about the, lab, the, the the prayer and asking for things. Go ahead and finish, yeah. please. Well, and then I'll because, finish. because appreciation is actually a frequency that your atomic structures are emanating, so what you put out, you get back. That feeling of appreciation and thankfulness, the genuine feeling, not not tricking yourself, not dusting all your negative feelings under the rug like the New Agers do and, and pretending you're thankful. But, I mean, the genuine feelings of thankfulness and appreciation, that's a frequency you're, you're sending out. So your physical reality can't help but reflect that back. And you ever notice right before Jesus would heal somebody, he kept asking them, do you have faith? Do you have faith? Do you have faith? Yes, I have faith. I have faith. He was generating those that frequency, those emotions, the faith yeah. inside of the person. And all he'd do is channel their energy back into them to heal them. And ever notice, he would say, your faith has healed you. He didn't say, oh, yeah, I'm the man. I healed you. High five. Right, right, he said, right. your he faith said, has yeah. healed you. You have yeah. healed you. And he yes. said, "All that I have done, I can tell you, doing greater." He still. said, "Your faith, your faith has made you whole." That says yeah. it all. Your faith has made you whole. That, that and he sums said, it up. We, "Yeah." He said, "We are like him. The only difference is he knows that we don't." Right, of course. And the reason I brought that up a while ago about my past and that letter piece that I wrote was because I, I wanted to this lady this lady said, you know, I understand now why you're like you are and I understand now where you're coming from when you curse and when you get mad and when you piss every you know, you just get out there and just really go bonkers on people for saying, Oh, it's such a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Go hug your puppy dog you know, I, I go you know, F you uh, because, you know, and when I when I tell them how many starving people there are in the world, and when I tell them how many wars there are in the world, when I tell them how many women are being sold into slavery and kids are being molested and sold into slavery, they say, oh, my God, I didn't know any of those things were going on. And I say, well, they are. And, uh, you know, it's like you and I have gotten this argument before, and I dang sure don't want to argue tonight. I, mean, I don't, I don't want to go head-to-head -head with you on this day tonight. There be no argument. People, people... You know, how can I, standing in my morgue over there with knives in the chest and all these tubes coming out of these old and young people, and I'm ripping pacemakers out of people with a scalpel, and I've got gang members in there that have been killed and bludgeoned, and, you know, how can I say, oh, it's a wonderful day in the neighborhood, you know, let's go pet, pet our puppy dog. You know, I can't. And it's, it's uh, when I'm running my missions, I can't. And uh, so there's a there's definitely a dichotomy there. There's definitely uh, something that I'm trying to express to people that maybe you can express even better than myself what I'm trying to say and and what that I, lady I, yeah. meant by, you know, gosh, I'm glad I know that now about you because now I know where yeah. you're coming from. You know, yeah. Uh, when, when you it's, see people on this definitely, digital. Definitely. When you see the people on this digital platform, you just see a blank nothing. You see all you see is is, is text, you know. And and how do you sum all that up? You know, well you don't. You just see what what you see is what you get, and that's what you judge. You know, is the text. Mm -hmm. And when people start to get you get to know you a little bit better, uh, they they start to understand you a little more, and they start to come into your world a little more. And even the most staunch <laughs> Christian would say to me, well, wow, I'll just shut up. I'll just yeah. shut up. I've never in my life experienced anything like that, nor would I ever yeah. want to. 
and now I understand mind you, and I love and I love you. So tell me, tell me, what am I trying to say? Mind if I mind if I illustrate your point for you? Yes, please, 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 please. You see, because there's there's different sets of knowledge that you have because you've been around the block a lot more than once. That understandably, <laughs> some of this knowledge conflicts. Like, you understand about appreciation. You understand about frequency, about the quantum hologram, about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you understand that, you know, what Gandhi said, become the change, so on and so forth. You understand about frequency. So you do yes, understand, agree. obviously, that to start changing things around is to have that faith in God and the quantum physics and the Holy Spirit, all that, and resonate that frequency of appreciation because you already know that that literally affects the physical reality and changes things for the better but you also know that it has to be done genuinely you can't pretend you're you're in an appreciative mode you can't dust everything else you're feeling under the rug like the new agers do and go oh i'm not looking at that and pretend right. because then you create what's called a quantum interference pattern it just messes the whole thing up and you actually get worse than you had before because you're adding yeah. resistance and it just, yeah. And, you know, and at the same time, you've been through all the hell you've been through. And what really aggravates you, I think, is that a lot of people expect you to make this huge leap from the, the total negative all the way up in the, into the total positive, saying, well, you understand this stuff, Tyler, blah, blah, blah. You know, why aren't you... Blah, blah, blah. And what they don't realize they're expecting you to do is being in the Atlantic Ocean and not taking the locks through the Panama Canal and expecting you and your ship to just jump over the landmass and just magically land in the Pacific Ocean. And that's ridiculous. You yeah. know, you got to start at the ground level and acknowledge you're there to even know there's an elevator to take up and to the top. I think. I think people don't understand either that Mary and I go to church functions and we go to Buddhist functions and we go to Hindu functions and we set up tables and I actually make cookies and set up chairs and actually sit and laugh and talk to people and hug people's necks and kiss them on the cheek and I be kissed. And, you know, people, well, I'm saying it tonight. I'm letting people know that I am a human being. You know, I, I, people know that I'm war torn. You know, they know. My friends yeah. up here know where I've been. And, uh, yeah. But, but you know, point, those those the are the point people I'm, the we point hang. I'm trying to make yeah the point I'm trying to make to validate you though is that people got to be kind of understanding about where you're coming from and kind of take you through that canal you know like like I said um and like you've done to people before showing someone that different reflection because if you put out that hostility and you don't see a different reflection then how are you supposed to know that anything else other than what you've been experiencing is realistically possible for you? Well, yeah. like you said, you're a human being. That's un it's an unrealistic thing to expect of you. So when you put out your, as you like to say, your piss and vinegar, you know, ref to re reflect back that compassion instead of, you know, shooting off back at you in a rage. And that's exactly how Jesus operated. And he, well, I will he admit that different reflection. I will admit, I will admit tonight on the air that I uh, jump. I jump the gun a lot, and I don't want to mess around with people that I feel like are just you know they've never been anywhere, they've never done anything. That's just not my gift. It's just not who I am. When I see people. <laughs> When I see people posting post after post after post after post after post about all this bullshit about, oh, I saw Grandma at Thanksgiving and Uncle Bobby got a new pair of socks and, and we did this and the doggy jumped up and we're going to go to soccer tomorrow and we're getting a new ring and I'm getting my hair done and, oh, it's going to look so pretty. I just want to say, fuck you. You know, I just, I just want to say, what the... Hell, okay, what are is, you talking about? Uh, yeah, got, this this new voyage. Easy on the language, though. This, right. this, this, this is new voyage. New voyage ministry. I'm sorry, Tyler. I'm running my Fra people off here. No, they love me. Okay, I'm sorry. Fracking. I'm sorry, everybody. I apologize, let's, everyone. Let, let, let's pass some gas and use fracking, not you know. Okay, but but really, I just want to apologize. You know, I do jump the gun a lot. 
and 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 it's just it's who I am, you know. I come from this nasty blood bloodbath, and it's just, you know, it's hard for me. It's so hard for me uh, to to explain to people, uh, you know, handling little fetuses and putting little little sockies on them and little headdresses and putting them in caskets and 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 having families want to have a funeral for fetuses. I've done that so many times and. To burn bodies and to watch their brains fry and to to look in there and say, oh, they're well done now. I guess we can take them out. No, there's still a little oozing going on in there. People don't understand. And I guess what? Why do I? You know, why do I have this this need to 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 make them understand where I'm coming from? It's like, do well, I need to even do that? Uh, you know, I have well, to do here's, this. It's like, let me answer that for you. Would you like an answer? It's the exact same problem that shall we say the the uh, the people that are able to to get along and are experiencing, for lack of a better term, the quantum abundances or the Holy Spirit or whatever it is you want to call it, trying to get people that are in the opposite negative to to understand. All humans have a desire for that that relation and that coming together and that unity and this world for thousands of years now has not been about unity. It's been about separate segregation and pulling things apart. And the world is only now starting to come together. So we are all really new at this coming together thing as a human race. We are doing it, but we're really new to it. And the old paradigm yeah, is dying, kicking and screaming and making a lot of noise, and and it's you know I mean you know, it and is people, dying. People, and people and people tell me people tell me some people that are real prima donnas I call them they'll tell me why do you have to come in here and piss on our party? Why do you have to come in here and and disrupt our perfect little lives? Why did you even have to bring that up? And I'm like. Oh, Alice, I'll knock you to the moon. You know what? What are you talking about? You know, it's it's like you know what people I, you know do. What I would say, you know what I would say to that? I would. Well, they say, do it all the time. Yeah, people do it I'd all the time. I'd say he's got the right to express himself just as much as you do. There's nothing right or wrong or good or bad or whatever. It's just a human right to express themselves. And you know, if you don't like it, don't listen. Walk away. There's no, there's no need to. I mean, how can someone there's say, so many. "Oh, I'm all, I'm all goody goody gotty lovey, whatever," but then when they come up against opposition, instead of being the love that they say they are, oh, all the you're stuff right, you're right. They turn confused. into a heathen. They turn into a complete maniac. You know, they're 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 professing all this love. I have people. This is what bugs me too. I have people on these Christian uh, groups, and they all profess love and understanding and compassion and giving and intuitiveness. And then when I get on there and I ask for prayer, they'll go, well, what do you need prayer for? And I'll go, well, I'm reaching out to you because, you know, I'm, I'm needing prayer today. My PTSD is really bad. Well, what's PTSD? Well, I was in da 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 and I tell them, well, oh, well we, 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 we're going to have to put you out of the group. And I go, What? Well, we're going to have to just ban you from the group. You just can't. You just can't use these. You, you can't talk about death or any of that stuff. You just can't talk oh, about starving God. children or nothing. And I'm going. And see, these are days. Listen, these are the people that just bug me to death. Well, they, you know they, what? I I know what those type of people are like, and it's like I say, I had to leave the church to find God. Yeah, that's the honest I, truth. Jay, you get where I'm coming from, Jay, on that? I know Dave does. Well, I call those yeah, types of um, It forces you within yourself, you know, all those things. You, re, you re, But they're entitled to whatever they feel and believe. Oh, believe all you me, I understand do, that. Uh, all I you understand. do is send love. I agree. All you do is send love and, and, and walk the other direction. Um, but you know, it's like you, know, you, Jay. You're always trying to tell people to prepare, prepare, prepare. And people are got people look at me going, "What are we preparing for?" 
we're fine. Mm-hmm. We have a brand new car. We have a brand new home. The kids are dressed nice. The school is wonderful. We're going to game next week. To, and I, you know, yeah. what what are we? What are you nuts preparing for? What are you nuts yeah. talking about? Why don't you know y'all what? get in the real world? Why don't y'all get in the, the real world with us? Yeah, the, you know what? The, what? The, the, good, the good and the bad are, are rising equally, and if you're not aware of the nature of both, there's this little thing called the Darwin Awards that I'm sure most people are going to be familiar with. That's, yeah. what's to pre- that's what's to prepare for, that with that knowledge because I mean, you know, even even science has shown that the frequencies are changing, the physics are changing, and the old materialistic corrupted crap. You see all these infrastructure failures, how well, all the old systems based on greed and corruption are no longer working. We have and, literally bled this country dry. We have literally bled this country dry with our selfishness and our greed and our hypocr- our hypocrisy oh, and our, yeah. our being two faced and and uh hypocritical and you know it's it's if we would just go back and look at the Bible, uh using the Bible as an example, as one one great book, and just look at the basics in Proverbs. If people would just look at the basics in Proverbs, or people that ask me all the time well, why does God do such bad things to people? And why does he let all these things happen, Kyler, that you tell us about? And I say, go read Habakkuk. Go read Habakkuk. And they do, and they come back and go, oh, okay, I didn't know. Uh, you know, read Habakkuk. Uh, it, it tells you why God allows these things to happen. And and uh, at the same time, I'm still confused about that. But if people would just do what we have the capability to do, if we would do what we learned in Sunday school and kindergarten, and if we would follow the golden rule, we wouldn't be having any of these problems. That's that's what you know. One of the reasons I wanted to come on the air tonight was to say, look. If all of you stop complaining and complaining and complaining and just go out and do something, we can turn this country around. But if we just keep sitting around on Facebook philosophizing and theorizing and everybody's a guru and everybody's an Internet expert and everybody's an expert on mysticism and thisism and thatism, it's not going to do a damn bit of good for anyone in this country, let alone overseas. We've got enough problems in this country to solve without trying to take over the Middle East, without trying to change the world across the sea. We've got problems here, and we have the capabilities to make these changes. What boggles my mind is we have umpteen zillion churches in this United States of America. And within that group, we should have at least one half of 1% of people that could make these changes, and these changes are not being made. We still have one of the most corrupt governments on the planet. We still have a banking cartel. We still have a Fed that's privately owned. We're selling the people out. We're selling our economy out. We're selling our jobs overseas. We're ruining this country, and it's all because of people's lack of confidence in themselves it's a lack of education it's a lack of intuitiveness it's a lack of uh intelligence general basic common sense intelligence and if people would just follow the golden rule but you know what we don't we don't we follow our passions we follow our pleasures we follow our lust we're we're massive consumers and we just need to get back to basics, but we will not. We will not get back to basics. Are you all still there? Yes. Yeah, I was just, I was just, I thought I'd lost somebody. Uh, put something on hold here. Let me see who this is. Uh, yeah, who's there? Who's online? Yeah, I I kind of sort of got kicked off and uh, calling back. I Sorry, messaged I, you on Skype. Apparently, you didn't see it. No, I'm okay. I was just I was on a roll there. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to say that if we could just get back to basics in this country, and this is something that blows my mind, even to the <laughs> point of a conspiracy theory. 
you know, it, it brings me to floor. It, it brings me to floor ride. It brings it brings me back to harp. It brings me back to CERN. It brings me back to NASA. It brings well, me back like, to the uh, nano like technology. Would you that uh, I, that when I learned it in parochial school, it didn't didn't really make uh, much sense when I was in Christian school, but now now it, it, it's making a lot more sense um, these days. And I mean, I'm sure you probably learned the same thing as what I'm trying to, you know, what I'm about to say, because uh, Christian parochial school is what it is, right? Remember yeah. when when they taught us that um, in the end times or, you know, whatever it is that you want to refer to it as, whatever label you want to put on it, that um, there will be a force that is, deceiving the world, false bringers of light, so on and so forth. But there's also going to be the force that, you know, some people call it the awakening, the ascension, whatever the heck you want to call it. But needless to say that everyone's going to have that choice of, you know, which which direction do you want to go. And I was thinking back then, because, you know, this is the 1990s, you know, our current mode of communication didn't exist. And I was thinking, how is everybody in the world going to going to know what's going on or being given, given the choice or whatever? And when you're given the choice, who in their right or wrong mind would honestly – Pick the negative side, right? And now yeah. it makes it, I know it makes so much sense to me. I mean, you've got the internet, you've got all these metaphysical awakenings where, like, you know, Joe Blow duh didn't know anything one day, and the next day he's going, "Holy crap! I know all this stuff about God and the universe and all this and that. Am I going crazy?" And then they go find other people that are having a similar experience. It's like, oh, I'm apparently not going crazy. So there's all these different, you know, avenues that people are getting this choice. Or as Bill Hicks like, uh, liked to say before he died, may he rest in peace, it's a choice between fear and love. And now I can see why a lot of people would choose fear because they're so addicted to, to things being as they've been and so afraid of change and they've got their heads in, in the sand. And, you know, what, what the Bible and everything was talking about that, you know, scientists are understanding now is that the vibratory rate of, you know, the the Earth, the solar system, perhaps even the galaxy or the universe, I don't know, is going up. And the higher frequencies are connected to that, which we have labeled as love or unconditional love, the lower is that which we have labeled as fear or negativity or what have you. And all these systems of the world have been grounded in this negativity, in this fear, in this greed, in this war, and everything we depend on and have depended on, the infrastructure, is grounded in this garbage. And that's why we see all these infrastructures, you know, falling apart. And the, for those of us who try to cling to the old ways as – they are being torn apart. You know how the Bible said two-thirds of the earth will be destroyed? Well, they didn't mean so much as by natural cataclysms or wars or whatever, but our own paradigms are going to kill us because if frequencies keep rising and if you're a person that's holding on to the lower negative, you know, it's kind of like, I mean, frequency is what it is. What happens if you stick your fingers in the electrical wall outlet? It's not going to, you know, end well for you. So, you know, it's, you know, people's own paradigms are killing them. You see increases in, in disease. You see advanced aging. I mean, you see just all this, all these 10 zillion different ways that, you know, people can win a Darwin Award. And if you really look at it, what's bringing them into that state? It's their paradigms clinging to the old ways because, your paradigm will affect your choices. And as you know, Kyler, there are wise choices and there are ones that are not so wise. And if you make too many not so wise ones, well, you know, well, it's dark in my more younger time. in my younger days I made some bad decisions and I can surely tell you that I learned from them and some people don't and I've learned and I 
I was afraid and I was scared and I was paranoid and I was terrified and you know I learned I learned some people it yep. just seems don't have the capacity to to learn they just keep going back and back and back like a dog yep. we talked about licking up his vomit the bible says men yep. men go back to their sin over and over and over again and every yep. time they'll say oh I'm sorry lord 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 and you know the Bible says to, to forgive our brothers and sisters 70 times 7. That's a lot, you know. Uh, yeah. Forgive your brothers and sisters 70 times 7. But, you know, as they, the Lord well, forgave they do, us. They do have, yeah, they do have the the capacity, but there's the free will factor. I mean, it's, again, people clinging to the old ways because they fear change, and they don't realize that as the as the bad rises, it means the good is rising too. Well, I'm also talking about these. these I'm also talking about these greedy politicians who who just keep taking and taking and taking and these CEOs that make uh 920 times the 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 rate of their employees now in salary and you know it's it, it just keep taking and taking and taking you know uh I'm not I'm not specifically talking about the paradigm of just simplicity and change and transformation but I'm talking about someone who just willfully willfully gets into Congress to become a part of the elite and just steal yeah. from the people. Just outright just steal and just take and, and let people starve to death. Uh, command the UN not to go in. Command the Red Cross not to go in and feed people. Let them die. Let them starve. We need to get rid of, you know, nine-tenths of that particular country. That's there's something I'm There's something you know, I'm curious as to whether or not you've noticed. What? You ever noticed that as the frequencies are rising and the time compression kicks in more and more, the whole physics of what you put out, you get back is a lot shorter than it used yeah, to yeah, be. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why yeah, we're noticed. seeing all these all these corrupt people getting their their butts handed to them because in the past, you know, it might have been 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years before what they put out, they get back, comes back and kicks them in the butt. And by the time it kick, kicks them in the butt, they're too old to well, give an ass anyway. Let's, but let's now it's that coming back right more away. Technology. Yeah, but there's more technology now, too. And this uh, sound, you know, our voices travel at the speed of bang, bang, bang. I mean, so, you know, yeah. you can fart you can fart in Dallas and smell it in Chicago in, in 30 seconds. I mean, it's back back when when you're talking about you 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 couldn't do that people didn't know what was going on you know oh, yeah. but now now you can't do anything without everyone knowing what's going on you know yeah. you can't no even secret. say something down at the local 711 anymore without somebody well, putting it on the internet that's what the and word so, apocalypse means. Most people think apocalypse means the dis- the destruction. No, it means all that was hidden and secret, you know, knowing, becomes becomes knowing. unveiled. Becomes known. So, yeah. yeah. And I believe there's and, a difference between secret and privacy. Privacy is your right to not have everybody know the exact details of what you maybe did in the bathroom ten minutes ago when you were sitting there reading your newspaper. Secrecy. Uh-huh. Is things that affect humanity in a yeah. not so wonderful way. And that is secrecy. Well, you know, Jesus also said that He would turn us over to our wicked and perverse ways in the end, which means He would just let us go. There would be you know, He'd get to a point, uh, get to a point to where we just we're turned over to our doggish ways. Um, there's not going to be a lot of uh, redemption. There's not going to be a lot of uh, salvation. There's not going to be a lot of uh, God or the universe or quantum physics intervening. As you said, when those vibrations uh, start to rise and if people aren't ready to go with it, they're just going to be turned over to their wicked ways. They're going to be given that gift to wallow in it. And there's not going to be much hope. There's not going to be much hope for those folks. Who 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 decide to just keep doing bad and just continue yeah. to hurt people and abuse people and con people and lie to people yeah. and take from people? You know, uh, yeah. I mean, there comes a point where everything has to come to a head. Everything has to come to a head sooner or later. In every generation, in every culture, uh, things come to a head. And I believe that this particular generation is coming to a head now. You know. Uh, I'm not saying it hadn't happened before. It's happened hundreds of times, thousands of times. But it's definitely happening in my lifetime. I'm seeing a major 
culmination of factors come together uh, where the steam pot is going to blow up. Man, it's it's, I, it's ready to blow. You know. You know what? I, I mean, you know, like you said about the physics and people's paradigms and everything else. I personally don't believe that there's like a, a place somewhere called hell that a so-called loving God is just going to toss people into. We no. of our own free will create, just hear me out, we create our hell here of our own choosing, and we have the chance to emotionally clear and get on get on the right track here. And I think that for the people that don't do it here, like these people that are, you know, all these genocides and greed and all the stuff you're talking about, the people that don't do it here, when they inevitably end up gone off the earth and you know their their soul goes before God I think God is going to welcome them back with open arms but here's the thing now their soul is in the full knowing of the universe so now they have to face all at once every nasty thing that they ever did to anybody and because now they are at one with everything they will experience it from the perspective of their victims, they will experience the pain. They will experience the torture. They will get you know, that backlash. Something that, that used to really scare me. Something that used to really scare me when I was a small child was the part in the Bible where it says, "All of your sins will be exposed before everyone. Your sins will be open to everyone to see." I used to think, "Oh my God, <laughs> no." Some of the stuff I've done, I wouldn't want the dog to see it. <laughs> you know what I've learned? I wear, I wear, I wear all my mistakes as a, just, <laughs> as a, as a badge of honor of learning. Because, like you, I learn from my mistakes, and what that allows for is relation with other people. Because if you've overcome stuff, but you know, someone's looking at what you've overcome and, you know, they're they're putting you on a pedestal. The only reason they're putting you on a pedestal is because they think you can't relate to them and their hell and their suffering. And well, when you, know. you put when you when you put out, put your mistakes out there for all to see, then all of a sudden the other person knows you can relate to them and they're like, Oh, He's been there too. He gets it. He gets it. So there's hope because he's been through what I've gone through and more, and he overcame it. So that means there's hope for me. But if well, the been... person doesn't understand that you can relate, then they're going to look at you like, ah, what does he know about what I've been through? Well, he, there's truth, no hope you know, for me. I inject truth serum with my presence with people, and they just tell me everything. And that's I've also said that gift. I want to hear or even on the phone with someone, or even whatever, Skype, you know, people just open up to me because they know for some reason they can sense that I've been the worst of the worst. For some reason they can sense that I understand uh, the drug addict with a needle in both arms, the alcoholic, the the pervert, uh, the wife beater, the, the, the bank robber. The arsonist, uh, you know, in my in my halfway houses, I had people from all persuasions. Uh, some I couldn't even mention on the air; they were they were reaching the Dahmer stages. Um, and yeah. and I can I can sit down and talk to any of these people. Any of yeah, these, it doesn't cause matter. You under you because you understand that victim and perpetrator are exactly the same thing. Those well, who we were wanna, who were yeah. victims tend to go down that perpetrator route because that's all they know. That's all they've been yeah. taught. When one thing and is I, all you've been taught, when you've been taught abuse, and that's all you know, that's all you know how to respond back with. And, and I don't perpetuate see the people, cycle. And I don't see anyone as bad. I don't either. You know, and Jesus, Jesus didn't either. Jesus made a lot of comments about people and a lot of analogies about people, but he never made judgments about people. If if, if people have ever really read the Bible. This is true. Uh, you know, he 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 understood people, and he knew that yeah. people had this capability. He knew that people uh, were flesh and bone and blood, and he knew that they were prone to filthiness and dirtiness and rottenness and 
and all of these things. And, and he you know, knew that for, it didn't have to be that way. Right. It didn't absolutely right. have to. We have a choice in the matter. He's given us an out, and not everyone decides to take it early. Some people wait until their last breath. My One of my uncles wait until uh, his last breath. You know, he used to curse God, and he would look up at the sky and just curse God, and he would drown little kittens in jars and in front of the family, and he would just drown yeah. little puppies he was really a mean guy, but he had a lot of things going on in his head. He was a former cop, and he was really messed up in the head, very angry. And on his deathbed, he <clears throat> screamed out for the Lord Jesus Christ for the blood to fall upon him. And he said, oh, Father, oh, Father, please do not forsake me. Please, please, oh, God, do not forsake me. And the family's eyes got as big around as silver dollars in that room. I yeah, mean, I they no believe he was crying out like he was in hell would you would you, you like know, my, my would you like my opinion as to why he's crying out and i mean this was a cry that you have never heard before yeah go ahead <laughs> well what a lot of people believe in, and it makes sense on the you know from the quantum understanding too in that last minute or two of your life, the veil between life and death is gone. So he that died. you can you, you, minutes when you he started. Can, twenty day, huh? day, twenty two minutes. Twenty two minutes from when he started, he died. Oh really? Well then he, when got he, that, he, he got that veil knocked loose a little earlier than most then. But when that veil is gone, it's almost like you're in, in, in two states at once. You're here uh-huh. And on the other side at the same time, and you yeah. got that that full understanding. So he got the truth pushed in his right up on him, he and died he was able to biggest, see. He died the biggest smile and tears coming out of his eyes. He died with the biggest release and relief of body tension that I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of people die in my arms. I mean, I've had a hell of a lot of people die in my arms. Look, looks, it was like almost he, as, looks like he cleared it, more more than 22 years of crap in uh, 22 minutes or less. Yeah, yeah, it was just a, a plea, one of the most blood-curdling pleas, you know. And you can tell when somebody's faking it, but when you're dying, hey, it's no time to fake it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is nobody, no time to nobody play around. Put, no, nobody's man. putting on an act when they're cashing in their chips. No, no, they're not. No, they're not. I agree. I agree. I've had gang members die in my arms, and I've had some of the sweetest testimonies and some of the some of the most uh, heart wrenching um, moments with hardcore gang members uh, die that's, in my that's, ambulance. That's, uh, that's because the veil drops, and they're that they, they've got the full awareness of the oneness yeah. of the universe while they're still in their body. Yeah. You know, people keep asking me why I don't go back in the pulpit, and um, I keep telling them, I just I just uh, have trouble with, uh, with the crucifixion. And um, it just startles people, you know. They're like, well, what? That's I don't understand. You know, you're 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 having trouble with the crucifixion, and I said, well, yeah, I'm having trouble with the whole Jesus Christ is the only Lord and Savior, and if you don't come to Him through the Father, if you don't come through Jesus to the Father, you're going to hell, and I can't buy into all of this, uh, yeah. you know, me against you kind of thing, yeah. and and I'm, I'm a Christian. You know, you're that's, 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 par- that's, par- that's paradigm misunderstanding because that's not actually what the Bible says. But you know, there's all these yeah, different interpretations. It, it, it is. Imagine it if is somebody what the church expects, though it's what yeah. the church expects. But imagine, and the church... uh, uh, just imagine for a second if someone thought that the term drinking only meant being an alcoholic. So you said, "Oh, I'm going to go get something to drink now," and you meant RC cola or coffee or whatever. And they're like, "Oh, you're an alcoholic." 
And you're like, no, I'm just getting a glass of coffee or whatever. Ah, don't backpedal your way out of it now. You already admitted it. And you're like, what? And there's no I'm way to convince them out of their view. So it's like that. What is the answer to that, Dave? Well, Jay? Jay, what is the answer? Uh, my my pro, you know, uh, propensity to to create this problem for myself. I'm a fiery preacher. I'm a good preacher. I'm a good teacher. I can keep people mesmerized for for two hours. You know, most people are right. screwing around. Most people are screwing around going to sleep on most preachers, but they they want more and more and more when I get up there. Well, but what when people it comes, miss is they, as Jesus said, I am the Son of God, and also are you. And he also said, because well, there was a group of people that, you know, when he did his miracles, they were saying, hey, you know, we're not questioning your power. We're kind of wondering which boss you're working for, if you get my meaning. And he said, the same father within me is also within you. Is it not written in your law that ye also are gods? And, of course, well, there's straight the other up, part Dave, of the book straight of that's straight up, about all that Dave, I could do straight also. Up. Do, yeah. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and that he died on the cross at Calvary for your sins and the sins of this world? I can't answer a direct yes or no because I have a bit of, a bit more of an uh, intricate answer to that one. No, but just flat out. See, the, the Pentecost, see, my pulpit people would say, well, if you have an intricate answer, then we're, you're out of here. You're not going to sit in my pulpit. You can under, please try to calm down a little bit here and just say, okay, let me think through this now for a minute. It's, you know, it's it's tough. It's really tough. And, and I'm sure oh, Jay, I mean, you're I, over. I understand. Jay? As a matter of fact, if there, what I've noticed, if there's, uh, you know, one of those, you know, shall we say, hateful fundamentalists that's that's dogging you, um, there's two Bible verses um, that'll get them off your back and, and get them to have, want nothing to do with you real quick. And I've already mentioned it. The one where Jesus said, the uh, same Father in me is also within you. Is it not written in your law that ye also are God's? And the one that says, all, all the works I have done also shall you do and greater still. Well, let, me, ever no- let me say, ever notice let me say this. Let me perfectly slide. okay. Let me, through, let, me, let me snake through this, kind of slither my way through this, okay? <clears throat> I can believe. Now, see, you're going to get me on this one. I can believe, can, C-A-N, I can believe that Jesus came and died on the cross at Calvary for our sins. I can believe that the Father said, hey, we got to do something here. This ain't working. There's laws up here in heaven and I got to I got to figure out a way. And old Pentecostal told me this one time, by the way. So I got to figure out a way to make this thing right because my life runs on laws. God's God's whole universe runs on laws. And we His call law. it quantum physics. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, but just don't slip over there. Now let's stay here in the old fashioned pulpit for a minute. I can believe that Jesus died for our sins. That God said, "Look, I got to do something." So I'm going to send my son down, myself down. And I'm going to walk on the earth, and I'm going to do some miracles, and I'm going to bring a group together, and I'm going to get this thing started here where people will have something to believe in, something to to have hope in and faith in, and something to center their attention upon. Where the – kind of like the founding fathers came together uh, in 1776 and said, hey, look – we got to get together on this thing. We got to create some laws. We got to get away from the crown. We got to create our own situation now. I know that we're we're all divided, you know, from the east coast north all the way down south to the east coast. We're 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 divided as hell. We're different as hell. We have different beliefs. We come from different cultures, different lands, but we're going to create the Americas. And and similar to what God did. So you know, is it okay for me to get up there and say, I can believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he came and died for our filthy, rotten, dirty, perverted, stupid selves in order that we might have eternal life in some future place called heaven. What a wonderful thing. What a beautiful thing for the children. Now, I'm not a hell, fire, and brimstone preacher. 
I don't get up there and tell people that, you know, you're going to hell and there's fire and brimstone and gnashing of teeth. And people are going to be suffering. They're going to be crawling around naked in all this old black oil. <laughs> yeah. Don't say, don't that's not, a, that's not a loving God. That's not a you loving know, God. I just can't see that, you know. I just can't see that, you know. I'd rather be, I'd rather just die. I told Mary, you know, I said, I'd rather just die and just meld back into the universe, you know, all my atoms, all my particles, all my pieces. That'd be just fine with me. But as far as this hell thing, I don't want to take no part in that. <laughs> yeah, you know you know it's what? Fair. I agree with you. You know what? It's like, you know, they say how, how God is unconditionally loving and loves everybody yeah. and lo- lovey, lovey, love. And then just like the, gonna, the, 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 and then just, just, just like that, those new ager chicks say to you, all of a sudden they go from love to, to F you. And it's like, wait a minute. Uh, a, 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 a benevolent God does not go from I unconditionally love to oh well you know if you uh, hold your thingy the wrong with the wrong hand when you do your business oh you're going straight down to the barbecue I don't believe yeah. in that God I believe in the yeah. benevolent loving God and well, then um, we bring up then we then we bring up the hell part. We bring up the devil part. You know, if there's a yin, there's a yang. If there's an up, there's a down. If there's a good, there's a bad. If there's a god, there's a devil. You know, did yeah, we make and, all and these things? And, yeah, and uh, if there's a god and if there's a devil, the devil ain't god, and vice versa. Like you said, yin, yin and yang. So God is not going to be casting anybody to this hell. And well, you think the devil I might be believe- us? You think the devil just might be us? I mean, we might have the devil in us that we've created this evil. This de- we are evil. We we are dirty. We are perverted. Look at the world. We're good. We're and dogs. Bad. You know, we're but, dogs. Uh, we're we're, we're, I am actually we're attempting to kind of get at a specific angle on this. Um, I believe in a benevolent God. Okay, and I've you know I've told people if hypothetically. This hypocritical, childish, so-called God that says he's unconditional one moment and then wants to toss you into the barbecue the next moment, that if for you know if he had a problem with me and and wanted to toss me into into hell or whatever, I'd say, well, you know. I believe in a benevolent, all-loving, all-forgiving God. So if you don't mind, um, could you please just make me cease to exist? Let me talk because, to your – Hold on, because if, it's If you don't mind, be, can I please talk to your supervisor? I'm almost done with my point, like a sentence. A Go sentence. ahead. And I, you know, and I would tell him, if you don't mind, please make me cease to exist because – I don't want to suffer the embarrassment of having to go through all eternity in hell, having been created by you, one of your creations. I don't want the embarrassment of being a creation of a hypocrite walking around in hell with that on me. Can you please just make me cease to exist so I don't have to suffer the embarrassment of you in that hypothetical God that I don't believe exists. I believe in a benevolent, unconditionally loving God. That's what I, I thought believe. you were and if any I thought Christian you were gonna wants say to, wants to hate me for that, then well, that's their right. They can go ahead and I hate thought me for you that. were gonna say, Lord, I just don't want to suffer for eternity down there with Kyler Davenport. <laughs> <laughs> No, actually, actually, you, you, just, wouldn't, you wouldn't go to hell because heaven wouldn't want you, and hell be afraid you'd be afraid of you taking over. Yeah, couldn't you just ask God to let you see it? Let him let you see a supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> you can say, Father, Father, can I see somebody else in charge here? Do you have anybody else at the front desk besides you? This is ridiculous. I, I need another plan here. <laughs> Yeah. Jay, what's your take on that? What I'm having a problem with here, because the pulpit's well, dragging me back, you know. Well, what uh, I think is the ancient Jews uh, had 
an entity impersonate God that was basically called Yahweh. Now, Yahweh is what you would call a limited God. You know, yeah, he was. Look, um, what others unlimited... would call a demon. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, he was a limited God. That's the truth. It's in the Bible. He was a a very limited God. It's even in the uh, canons. Uh, canons. Uh, he he was more lawful. He was very lawful. Uh, they created this lawful God, this the kind of a God of law. It's kind yeah. of like God was in the Old Testament. You know, in the Old Testament, everything was law, 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 law. And then God, Jesus, yeah. came to break the law. Jesus came to get rid of the law, you know. Yeah. Well, that sounds like and Yahweh was a God, not the God. He was a God, yeah. You're right. Like Zeus. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Jesus yeah. Jesus doesn't want us living under the law. You know, the mm-hmm. law is for people that break the law. <laughs> the law mm-hmm. is only for lawbreakers. It's not for enlightened people. Uh, we can um, use that word, enlightened. You know. Well, the supreme law is love. Yeah, yeah. The supreme law <laughs> is love. And if you, if you're enlightened, I hate to use that word for some reason, but if you're enlightened, you don't need the law. None of the books on the law yeah. apply to you. No contract, no state contract yeah. law, no federal contract law applies to you whatsoever. Because you are sovereign. You mm-hmm. are uh, a sovereign. Operating in grace. Yes, operating in grace, and you won't break the law. Uh, yeah. A good Christian I, will not yeah. break the law. Can I quote David Icke? Yeah. David <laughs> Icke says, we only need one law. Do as you will as long as you're not enforcing your will upon another. Hmm. Yeah, makes sense. To a point. Do 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 whatever you like as long as you're not forcing your will on another. And David Icke says that some idiots come to him and say, "Oh, well, what about people who commit murder?" And he's like, "Well, that sure sounds like someone forcing their will upon another to me." You know, people come to church. People come to church to get a real package deal, and and my church wouldn't be that. I wouldn't give people a package deal. And that's the problem I think I'm having. You know, people come to church to get A, B, C, D, E, F, G, let's go home. Okay, it all sounded great. It's all perfect. Uh, okay, we got the heaven thing, got the hell thing, got the sin thing. Uh, we've, we've said our prayers now. We we shook hands. Uh, let's go home. It's it's wonderful. But, you know, I get up there and screw everybody up. You know, I start talking like <laughs> Dave Kelso and... Jay Larson and us on the air, you know, I get up there and just start talking about all these different things. People enjoy it, but they leave with their mouth open. They're like, well, we didn't get a package deal. We didn't get a package deal here. What? May I propose propose a theory? Yeah. Maybe the reason the pulpit's calling you back is because maybe your mission is to shake up people's paradigms and give them an alternate perspective. And maybe it's also for you to challenge yourself to move out of judgment that anybody who walks away um, you can see it as okay well they have the right to walk away if they want maybe they'll be back maybe they won't and maybe all the stuff that's happened in the last few months is to prepare you for that all the people that walked away from your your radio network and now all of a sudden they're coming back in droves apologizing and saying I had you all wrong well maybe this is this preparation for your pulpit work because maybe you're going to get a more expanded version of that. Maybe you're going to get up there in the pulpit, and you're going to you're going to there mix so that many... Bible with some esoterics and metaphysics and quantum physics and whatever else. People's jaws are going to drop. They're going to walk away. But when they're away, they're going to think about themselves. They're going to go, you know, maybe Kyle people or are so have confused. A... People are so confused, Dave. They they don't get it all at church. They, they they have so many questions that they keep to themselves. And I talk to people when I go to churches to visit. I'll talk to people, you know, how I am, and you are. We talk to people outside and in the Sunday school rooms and stuff, and they're all confused, and they just won't tell the pastor about it. You know, they just sit through the whole thing, and, and they won't tell. They won't even raise their hand. People are afraid, you know, to, to buck the pastor, you know. 
Did and they, they, they want to raise their hand and say, well, I didn't understand this, or I didn't understand that, or why do you think that, or why do you keep saying that when it's not true, or why do you keep preaching this one thing that's not even in the Bible? <laughs> you know? did, you, did you know that, um, that, that Jesus explained how to handle that confusion? Go ahead. It's the whole thing about, you know, how the praying is the asking and the meditating is listening. Well, yeah. he, he does explain how to meditate. He says, make yourself like an empty cup so that you may be filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's all of our stupid paradigms and compartmentalizations and expectations. This has to happen this way. This has to happen that way. That has to be that. That has to be this. Let go of it all. Get rid of it all and be like an empty cup. That's also why Jesus said, let the children come to me for it is such as these that shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. And he also yes. said the kingdom of heaven is within. So what he was saying is that these children haven't had the crap indoctrinated out of them. So they are right. like that empty cup. So if you teach them to go within, to pray, and then to meditate and to listen, that they will be filled with the Holy Spirit because they haven't been taught how to not be filled with the Holy Spirit. So it will yeah. work just fine for them. So you, you know what else? Like a what child, else? Like what else is so? What else is so very, very, very interesting to me is the fact that Buddhists put Christians down so much. Uh, I've went I've around up here. And, well, they yeah they they do they do because you know me I'm out there feeling the pulse of the world every day and I mean it's like. These Buddhists, uh, you know, they put Christians down terrible, horrible, you know, call them idiots and stooges and ignorant. And and it's like, you know, just come in here and chant an M.A.O. Ho Rinkeo or just go to go to the priest at the Buddhist temple. Uh, keep the Christians out. We don't want to hear any of your bullshit in here. Keep your bullshit outside. They've told me that. And, uh, but they, so they've got the version of the BS from what you've told me, especially on the Nam Yoho Renge Kyo thing. They don't even want to do the chant right. No, they don't. And, you know, it's like uh, the other thing is, is uh, um, the New Age people kind of bug me. You know, they don't want to talk about Jesus. They don't want to talk about God of the Bible. And this is something that God said exactly that they would do. And yeah. and he said, you know, he predicted this. It's all laid out. It's all laid out, whether it's by the Vatican or by the by God or by First Testament Church, whatever. Yeah. It's all there, you know. And that yeah. kind of that yeah. kind of steers me toward Christianity. That kind of steers yeah. me toward Christianity, because well, because the a, Bible. There was a the, the Bible awakening that started in the '60s, and the powers that be are like, no, no, we can't have this. So the powers that be created the new wave, uh, the new age movement, which is basically a um, excuse my French, but there's no other word bastardization of of metaphysics, and yeah. and that's where you get all the shunning because all these new agers are about shun 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 shun. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. A true metaphysician will acknowledge Jesus, will acknowledge Buddha, will acknowledge Gandhi. A true metaphysician acknowledges all in creation. Where and I've also noticed, it, and I've also noticed a lot of these New Agers were molested. I've done some personal, non-scientific studies on this. These these New Agers, a lot of them have been molested. They've been beat. They've been dissed as women. Uh, they've been called queer by their dads. They've got all kinds of psychological baggage. They're they're submissive. They're kind of uh, kind of eccentric and strange. And and it's I don't the know where that all a trap. A new age is a trap to it, suck those people in. Yeah, yeah. And it's like at least in at least in the church, the good ones that I know of up here. You can go in and get prayed for, and people can lay hands on you and hold you and touch you and feel you and say, you know, it's okay, baby. The Lord loves you. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to. I'm not going to bug you. The Lord loves you, and we love you. And and uh, I don't see that happening in the metaphysical uh, circles that that I run in and that I know of and that <clears throat> I've studied. I don't see that. There's no. Those aren't, there's no, those aren't metaphysical circles. There's a difference between me and metaphysical circles and new well, age. Yeah, I, just, I, just use that, I just use that word. I just use that word. But you know, it's like there's no, there's no uh, Oz. There's no God. There's no. There's no end point 
You know what I mean? In the middle, in yeah. some of these uh, these new age groups, there's nowhere to go to get comfort. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah, that's Jesus years, was, you know. Yeah, Jesus was metaphysical. Do you know what the word metaphysical means? Yes, of course. Yeah, Jesus, metaphysics, uh, meta meaning expanded, physics yes. meaning how the universe operates. So it's an expanded knowledge of the universe of God, and Jesus explained how to access that, to be filled and the Holy with Spirit, called the Holy and the Spirit. the Holy Spirit is a person of comfort, the comforter. The, the Holy Spirit is the comforter. And these, med, these, these New Age people, they don't have a comforter. They're all looking for the spaceship. They're all <laughs> looking for the, uh, the 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 aliens under the North Pole. They're all looking for uh, the Greys to come back, or you know the 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 bug eyed uh, beings, or you know. And, Quite frankly, to me, the ETs are the ETs are just like we are, good, bad, and everything in between. They're just people. well, I don't see. I don't want to go there tonight, but I'm just. I'm okay, I'm saying, just taking a punchline. I'm not going to go deeper. I know. I, I'm just saying it. It just seems so much more comforting to me personally to have God and to have the Bible. As long here, here we go. As long as you don't go out cramming it down people's throats and telling yes. them they're going to hell if they don't go with Absolutely. you, they don't come even, to your even church. Even Jesus agreed with you when the disciples were saying, "Come on, Jesus, we got to force these people to see it." Jesus says, "No." You teach by being the example. Force is resistance. It closes people's mind and disrespects yeah. their will. You have to be the example because the disciples yeah. have the first idea. And Jesus is like, no, 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 that doesn't work. You don't go there. I just feel so comforted, you know, in my life. God has done a lot of things for me, and I know it was not some, you know, alien from another planet that was doing it or my digital master, you know, or my handler. It was God, you know. I know it was, beyond the yeah. shadow of a doubt. I remember when, when I went out and prayed at the hospital when my mom was laying in a coma and uh, I'd never been a big prayer warrior then. I'd never been a public prayer person. And my mom was laying there in that coma and her she had tears coming out of her eyes and the doctor came in and said uh, before the day before Easter the doctor came in and said, well, he said, Irene's not going to wake up. I'm sorry to tell you that she's had a massive brain hemorrhage, and I don't expect her to make it at all. And I don't, I definitely can tell you that she's not ever going to get up and hold your hand again. And I said, Oh, no, 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 no. Please, please don't tell me. Please don't tell me that. And he said, Well, I'm sorry. I, I can't uh, tell you anything but the truth. And at that point in time, I had to make a decision. Uh, what am I going to do here, you know? And they had this prayer garden out in the front uh, between the hospitals. They had this big, beautiful prayer garden with uh, flowing uh, water and everything. And mm -hmm. I went out there to smoke a cigarette. And uh, I was standing out there in the parking lot. And something just drew me over to that garden. And I went over to that garden and I sat down and... There was people sitting all around giggling and laughing and playing and, and jokes and all kinds of crazy stuff. There's a bunch of homeless people out there. And I just stuck my hands up in the air and I just started praising the Lord. And I just started crying. And I mean, I cried and I cried and I cried. And uh, I prayed. And I said, God, if you will just take this pain away from my mother and just take her with you and let her die and go on home with you. Or just take me home, take both of us home, or just give me her pain, give me her coma. And I said, I don't really know what I'm doing right now, and I said, I'm all mixed up. But I said, I'm asking you faithfully from the bottom of my heart, Lord, please let my mama live. Please, please let her just look at me one more time and say I love you. And I remember walking the halls of that hospital all night long, and just a, a zombie, I was a zombie, I was just empty-headed and I remember the next morning I was asleep in the chair by her and I woke up and she was staring at me her eyes were as bright <laughs> as the sun and she held her hands out to me 
And she said, I'm so hungry, honey. And I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt at that moment, I knew that God had done that. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that God had heard my prayer. And that doctor came in, the nurse went to screaming, and you running down the halls, and here comes this atheist doctor. He told me he was an atheist. And he said, I don't think that God of yours can do a thing the night before. He said, I don't think that God of yours can do this, can override this. And he came running in the room, and he looked at her, and his eyes got as big around as silver dollars. And he looked at me, and he said, this is impossible. It's impossible. This is some kind of anomaly. It's an anomaly. And I said, what are you talking about? She's looking at you as plain as day. She has her hands out. She's hungry. She's awake. She's not in a coma. And he said, you need to come out in the hall with me for a moment. And about that time, he had this thing in his hand. And he looked at me, and he said, I want you to look at this. And I said, what, are you, what is it? He said, there's not one sign of a blood <coughs> clot in this woman's brain. He said, what did you do? <laughs> and I said, what do you mean, what did I do? He said, what did you do? Did you pray? And I said, yes, sir, I did. His name was Dr. Cabasso. I said, yes, Dr. Cabasso, I did. I said, I cried and I prayed and I walked these halls all night long. He said, this is impossible. It's impossible. This woman had an explosion in her brain the size of three golf balls. He ordered the nurse to go get another... Uh, scan of her brain they rushed her down there and got another scan of her brain and he comes back to me and he says I believe that I'm going to start praying <laughs> and I said what are you talking about and he said this is impossible and he just kept on he said this could not be and I said, well, it is, <laughs> you dummy. <laughs> and he said, mind, well, mind this if I God of right. yours must have some power. That's what he said. He said, this God of yours must have some power. And I said, no, let me tell you something. I've got some faith. And he just yep. walked away. Want me, to, want, want, me to want me to tell you how, how Jesus would have probably responded to you? Yeah. He would have said, I didn't do nothing. God didn't do nothing. Your faith, your power that God has granted to you healed her. Yours. Just the same thing as Jesus said to every single freaking person that he quote-unquote healed. He said to everyone, I didn't do it. It was you. It was your faith. It was you. It was your power. Let me All open this line. You also Come tell on. you do. Stand by, stand by. Let me open this line up. Uh, 918, go ahead. You're on the line. Hello. I'm just listening. I'm enjoying the show. It's my first time here. Welcome. Yes, glad to have you. Kyler Davenport Thank here. You. I'm on the line with Jay Kelso and with uh, Jay Larson and Dave Kelso. How are you? That Do you have was, something? Um, I'm just beautiful. God has, um, came through for me for this month and, and my situation, and I've Written out my cue card for every room in the house, and I wake up every morning and go to bed with those words and that thought in my heart. And um, he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. And well, I that's what. That, yeah, I keep that all kind of what the show's uh, kind of what the show's about tonight is kind of my. Uh, you know, I've been going through a lot of changes in my life, and um, I'm kind of coming back to my roots uh, of simplicity in God and in Jesus Christ and uh it's been de- very difficult for me being the intellectual nut that I am and <laughs> being the science uh you know the science person that I am and studying quantum physics and world religion it's been very difficult for me to get back to my basic roots but that's where I want to go that's what I want to do is get back to some simplicity and uh 
I want to believe it with all of my heart and all of my soul and all of my mind and all of my body and not just halfway. You know, I don't want to do it halfway. If I go back in the pulpit, if I start teaching again, I want to make sure that I'm centered and that I know what I'm talking about and that I believe what I'm talking about. And that's what mm-hmm. I wanted to come on Maiden Voice tonight, and I wanted to talk to my audience about that and get some input from uh, from the different people. I'm glad you what? came on. Yeah. Yeah, I one think, thing that's definitely wait. Go okay. ahead, go ahead, caller. Oh no, I think yeah. it's this. I think it's the time right now. It's this season. It's the time for all of that because it's so many people that are coming back. You know. Yes, there are so many people. Where are you calling from, caller? I'm calling from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Wow, wonderful! I came through Tulsa last year. I have a friend in Tulsa. I have a friend in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I've got some family in Oklahoma City. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I'm right down the street from where are you? Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. Uh, I'm in Chicago personally. <laughs> and Jay's That's in a Phoenix, I'm Phoenix I'm Arizona. I'm from Chicago. Oh, really? All my family's there. Five eight eight two three hundred. <laughs> Only Chicagoans to get the joke. Empire. <laughs> yeah. Empire. Yeah, I've heard that one. That's wow. It. I love you know this what? show. I never knew. How long have you been on? I've never heard of the show. I've been on for a couple of years. I started out with a thirty-minute show on Blog Talk Radio and kind of grew the network. And now we're we're getting out around there, around the world. Uh, you know, things are really popping here. We're we're doing a lot better. Uh, I'm still not on the air at regularly scheduled times. I need to do that. I've been promising my audience. Dave keeps threatening to come over and beat me up. I've I've said this on every show, and I just don't get on. And, and no, like I, I haven't threatened to come over and beat you up. I threatened to come <laughs> over and cut off cut off your. Never mind. Anyway, no, just, just yeah. Playing. Never mind. This is a Christian yeah, show yeah. here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what? You know, you, you know what, ma'am? Though, um, the one thing that you know, I found that works for me in in my life as far as changing my circumstances, and especially when facing those things that are that are difficult to face, is when the more thankfulness and appreciation that you can generate inside of you. And I mean genuine appreciation, thankfulness, not that dusting everything else under the rug and just pretending. I mean genuine, really resonating it and really like feeling it genuinely and as much as you possibly can. And if you're able to hold that, I mean, that is the basic level of being filled with the Holy Spirit. That will start yes, to flip, flip around your physical reality, and I mean, I do this all the time. When I see things not starting to kind of not really go a good way, I just, you know, I think of every possible thing that I'm thankful for and appreciative of, and I just start thinking about that and why I'm thankful for it and why I'm appreciative of it and feel it more and more. And because, you know, that's, I mean, that's a frequency. Everything's energy in the universe, yes, right? It brings We're all in the it, universe. You feel it. Yes, yeah, it, and it frequency. Into you. Yes. Yeah, frequency attracts itself to itself, kind of like you won't have, you won't see gold and uh, and uh, dog defecation bonding together into something called shold. You know, as my friend Perry Cross made a return joke to me on that one day. Um, you're not going to see that because it's two different frequencies. They don't come together. So when people are in this, oh, I'm suffering and I'm I'm sad and I'm this, and they're in all this rut, that's a frequency that's compatible with bringing more rut. And so this is what Jesus but, 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 is trying but, to teach but, people. But let, me, let, me, let me interject something there. Yeah. But it's got to be Mary, real thing. Yeah, not yeah Mary, 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 and I have been homeless, and we've been out there in the snow and the blizzards, and we've been hungry, and we've been out there lonely and scared and depressed. And when Mama died, and Daddy died, my sister died, my brother-in-law died. All these people died at one time, and we just left and came to the Northwest. And we got here, and I was driving on a flat tire down a one-way street, crying. 
was Mary screaming at me, pull over, pull over, pull over, my God, pull over. And I was like, I don't want to pull over. And she's like, where are you going? And I'm like, I don't care. I just want to die. I just want to die. We're in this strange land. We know no one here. We're broke. We got a flat tire. We have no spare tire. The cops are everywhere. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I just want to die. And she started screaming, and I started crying, and we pulled over in this parking lot, and the cops came up, and we're, we're trying to sleep. Our socks are stinky. Our, our, our underwear hadn't been changed in two or three days. We're, we're, we're depressed as hell, and all we could do is just pray. And I just prayed. I asked God to just lift us up and just hold us up through this because we were literally about to just croak. And this cop comes up and he goes, what are you doing? He's shining his lights on the car and everything. And I said, officer, I said, we're from uh, the south. We just got here. We've had all these flat tires. We don't have any money. We're starving to death. And I said, I just don't know what what we're going to do. And he said, I'll tell you what. He said, you just sleep here and don't worry. And he brought us food. Wow. Hamburgers and French fries and Dr. Wow. Peppers. And and him and his partner got out and they talked to us for a long time, asked us if we needed a blanket. Wow. And, and you know, that was just a moment, you know. I mean, he could have took us to jail. God. He could have took us to jail. He could have ticketed us for no trespassing. He could have done anything. He didn't even check our ID. He didn't even ask us for our ID. And um, so we stayed in that particular place for a while. And you know who turned us away? Do you know who turned us away? It was the churches that turned us away. I knew you were going to say that. I was going to say, please don't say Christians. (laughs) Church after church after church turned us away. And it's the homeless that took us in. It's the felons that took us in. It's the drug addicts that took us in. And it's the ones who were the lowliest are the ones that took us in and helped us. The churches snubbed us. Yes. They didn't like the looks of our car. <laughs> they didn't like the looks of our clothes. They didn't like anything about us because we didn't fit into their That's country right. club. And That's that really right. made me sick. Yes. It really made me it really just gave me a worse taste in my mouth for 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 uh, false Christianity. Uh, you know, I, it made me sick. Yeah. This and, lady uh, being from Chicago, I think she knows that most of the most of the churches up here are exactly the same way: fundamentalist, yeah. Catholic, and Lutheran, yeah. and everything's a contest. They make you put your names on on the oh, offering yeah. envelopes, yeah. and they keep yeah. score. Yeah. It's yeah, nasty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And, and 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 we don't do drugs. We do not do drugs. We do not drink. We're, 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 matter of fact, we were up on the mountain tonight talking about just how boring we are, you know. And Mary's saying, well, why don't we have any friends? <laughs> and I'm like, well, we don't smoke dope. We don't take methamphetamine. We don't do heroin, which is the going thing up here. We don't party. We don't like to go out and listen to loud music. You know, it kind of bugs me at my age, even though I'm a singer and a guitar player. <laughs> But you know, it's like we don't fit in. We don't fit in, and and um, everybody up here smokes dope. I mean, everybody up yeah. here takes pills. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, if you don't meet somebody up here and they're not high, there's something wrong. You got to call the police. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like up here they arrest you for being sober. You know. Yeah. It's, uh, it's one, amazing. I want to know if you're from there because you're not like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we still don't fit in. And, uh, you know, it's like um, church isn't supposed to be that way. You know, if Jesus had a church today, he would probably have people coming in crippled and sick and dirty and wetting all over themselves, you know, <laughs> and, and uh just, just put them down at the altar and just love them and pray for them and hold their hands and just love them and and stay there for six or seven hours and eat. And I now think we go he, to I think if Jesus was here today, he'd be on Comedy Central talking a lot like George Carlin and asking what the heck's wrong with with people and what what is this. 
Christianity stuff he sees, he doesn't recognize it from what was back in his day. It's two different things. What's wrong with you people turning it into this? Yeah, he said, I will tell you, I didn't know you. People say, I will yeah. deny you because you denied the, true, the truth about me. You know, he says, I yeah. will deny you. It's a fire. I, rem- I now- have, remember that. I remember that verse. It says, "The false bringers of light will come unto him and say, Lord, Lord, look at all the works we have done in your name.'" And he will say, "Get thee away from me! I do not know you." I never knew you. He will say, "I never knew you." Yeah, and you know, I can see why. And uh, I just don't know what's happening to the world. It's uh, you know, nobody really knows what's happening to the world. We have all these theories, but. But I'm going to go back to the old gospel. Uh, Mary's getting so tired of me, um, you know, flip-flopping on this. And, uh, you know, she wants me to to make a decision. I don't blame her, you know. You know Um, what? Just be true to yourself. Define who you are as per your own definitions and whoever accepts it cool and whoever does it cool too. Well, you know, I I pray to God so much. You know, I pray all the time, and when I pray, I shake the room because I cry. I get really, really in the Holy Spirit, and I just cry, man. And when I start crying and praying, oh, you better look out. I mean, the room is going to shake. It's going to take off, you know, and people get something out of it. It's it's a power coming through me, you know. It's, it's not really coming from me. It's a power coming through me. I'm like a conduit, and people need that kind of prayer. I've seen it uh, work miracles with people. You know, but you've got to stay with it. You can't be fake. you can't be fake. You know, I see preachers get up and say all these fancy prayers and everything, and it's just uh, okay. It's time to go home now. You know, um, and it just doesn't isn't work for me. You know, I, I'd rather see the old Pentecostal prayers. You know, I'd rather have somebody put their hands on me and shake me around a little bit, shake me up. <laughs> you know? uh, well, as as Kyler will will attest to. Well, he's seen this a lot more than once. Um, when, whenever anyone really gets into conversation, um, you know that connected stuff um, with with him or with me or with Jay or even with all three of us, there seems to be something that happens on the energetic level. The person ends up coming back later, going. The uh, heck did you all do to me? And it's like, what? Well, first, first, all the bad stuff in my life and the stuff that I was, you know, all these things, these bad things that I was addicted to and, and whatever, everything started to crumble and fall apart around me. And then I was forced to pick up all, all the pieces of it again. And, and after that, everything's just so much better and all these people that were bad for me just want nothing to do with me. And, and all, I'm meeting all these really nice people, and all this good stuff is happening. What what what'd y'all do to me? And it's like, well, we didn't do anything. <laughs> but that you know, just has to happen. <laughs> you know, there's so many um, there's so many hateful people nowadays. Uh, there's so many hateful people up here uh, where we live. Uh, we live in a very liberal part of the Northwest, very uh, hippie, a lot of hippies, a lot of uh, metaphysical stuff, a lot of New Age stuff. Uh, you know, everybody up here has got a tattoo, which I'm not putting tattoos down. I'm just trying to give you an idea of who's up here, you know. Um uh, we live in a very racist uh, area where there's no blacks. Uh, you know, if you see a black, you're like, oh, my God, the black, look, there's a black person, look, look. You know, it's like there's no black people up here. It's uh, it's just weird all the way around. I'm from the south where we, you know, I grew up with black people and, and, and Hispanic people. But uh, people are hateful up here. They're just downright mean. And, Chicago's uh, a mix. You know, it's just I'm wondering what's making everybody so dang hateful. It's just, it's got to be a lack of spirituality. I've talked about this with Jay before. You know, people are losing their spiritual root. They're losing their spiritual compass. They're losing. Uh, they, they, some of them don't even have and never had a spiritual compass. Maybe you and need that, to go down to Portland because Katarina's been having nothing but the most wonderful experiences with the most. Wonderful, loving, and open people, uh, metaphysical, Christian, yeah, atheists. I mean, everybody. 
um, Katarina's been having the most wonderful experiences in, in the Portland area. Maybe you need to go check out Portland a little bit. <laughs> Well, we're going to do an art opening in Portland. I'll probably be meeting a lot of people over there. And I'm doing a new CD, and I'm working on a new play, live stage play. And uh, I'm going to be showing some of my art over there. And we're going to be doing some lectures uh, on long-term care. Uh, we're going to be doing some webinars on long-term care and some physical seminars on long-term care. For all of you who are caregivers or taking care of a loved one at home, we're going to be doing a lot of education around the uh, Oregon, uh, Washington state area. Over Did you the know next, that uh, um, Katarina got accepted into that um, 300 um, uh, art festival thing? Um, I'm sure you, you probably paid attention to her post on that, but you know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. It's wonderful. once a year in Portland that, that three, only 300 are accepted? Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, she, got, she, she got in. It's wonderful, just wonderful. Jay, what are you thinking about all this? Uh, uh, things are working in God's time, so to speak. It, it, things are happening, they're happening in the right direction, in the right flow. All we need to do is go out and express I agree. for ourselves. I agree, 100%. You know, the wonderful thing is, is when you show love to the hateful, they got to stop and think about themselves because you've completely challenged their reality. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier, and that is definitely the truth. Um, that's what Jesus was talking about. That's what Gandhi was talking about. Buddha, all of them. The list goes on. That's exactly what they were talking about. Well, caller, caller from Oklahoma, are you having problems that uh, God is bringing you through, seeing you through? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mention my name. Um, my name is Jacqueline Kennedy. Um, what oh, nice I, to meet you. Uh, thank you. What I've been going through, I've uh, been digging and putting myself into um, classes at church. I've been one called God ER. I go to Victory uh, across from the praying hands. And um, Pastor is Sharon Doherty. And um, I started to put, putting everything into focusing on him for the last three months. My disability from an attack on my job at the juvenile correction over here. Um, put me to where I'm in, I end up um, getting stomped and kicked in the face and head. And all of that ended up me going into post-traumatic stress disorder. And the next last year, I ended up trying to commit suicide twice. And um, oh, man. during that, um, I come to where now my long-term disability was cut off in October. So... I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, so that left me with nothing. Nothing came in. And I, oh, all I did was pray, 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 pray. And I'm, to the fact that you have to, when you mentioned that you have to wait to get into the spirit until it comes to you, that is exactly yes. what you have to do. Okay. Yes. The thing about it is that I have a disability hearing coming up December 10th. Now, I, I was blessed. Doing all of this, I saw no way of me getting my rent uh, paid for this month. Out of two months, this came about long-term disability, recalculated, and found that they owed me $400. I went to the church. They said they could not help me because they helped me in July, but they did come through at uh, 300 and the court cost was added to the rent, so the eviction I got a week ago. Uh, they wanted me out. I've been here 13 years in this, in this apartment. 13 in the same apartment from Chicago. Wow. wow. And I have never had a problem. Everything's been up together. My home is always clean and together. And they, we had new owners within the last two months. So I know the devil know when you're trying to get deeper to closer to God that he's going to come in with most of all the armor he can bring to try to stop you. And it's so you know, hard to stand on it and, and go through it. And uh, I, I still have to wait, look for December. What's going on? I don't want to have to sell my my tech dining room set and my deep freezer. I said I didn't have to do it this month. I I got to go deeper and believe in him to come through to the new year because that's when my <clears throat> disability is supposed to kick in. You know, Jacqueline, um my my theory has always been that we as people need to help each other more, and that's something that we don't do. 
Yeah. We talk a lot. We talk, 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 pray, 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 and we strut around the church, but we don't really reach out beyond that <laughs> comfort zone and help each other. Um, we don't walk the walk. No, we don't, no. And that's something that Marion and I always try to do. We do, we try our best to go. I mean, we live in our RV. We we run the radio station out of the RV. We run the ministry wow, out of the RV. that is awesome. And Jacqueline? we are always at ground zero with the homeless. We're always here in the streets. We're always where the action is. And and um, But most of the people we know up here are so living in a glass house, in a bubble, in a comfort zone, they, they will not reach out beyond their yard to help anyone. And, and that I think is in a family of an 18-year-old girl and her 23-year-old husband, they weren't married, but when I took them to church with me, with their newborn baby from Chicago, um, yeah. I took them to the church. They talked to him. He got kind of upset because the pastor wanted one of the pastors wanted to know why they weren't married and they're sleeping in the in the house with me. And yeah. I took them in because they was on the street. And um, and once he was angry when we left the church, and I said, "Don't get angry at him, at her. She's only going by what she's asking through the Bible." You are supposed to be. If you're going to keep going on, you shouldn't be making another baby without being with her. If that's going to be who you're going to be with. Well, they ended right. up they ended up going to the shelter because, of course, he started filling his oats when he started, you know, feeling that he was making a little money now. He got a little job. And I said, you're going to have to go because, mind you, I took them in three weeks after I got jumped. And I, wow. um, I had a brace on my neck. I had... I heard my neck pop. What happened was that one of the boys in the juvenile correction, I was working there for eight years, and he ended yeah. one of the boys was on the phone. I, I had to go to their unit, which wasn't my unit, because they broke someone's uh, arm, one of their staff, and everybody's scared of oh. that particular uh, that uh, unit. My unit, I came off my off day, and they gave me the keys to their, the other unit, and I knew all the kids. They knew me. And now, when I got on the unit, I said, okay, we're going to calm down. What happened was one boy was on the phone, another one was way pacing back and forth to fight this boy that was standing next to me. And I knew the boy that was standing next to me, all of them. And they didn't take their meds. See, in Chicago, we will give you your meds. Down here, they have a choice. Right. That they don't have to take the meds or not. Well, they didn't take the meds on this unit. They did it for a week. And uh, they was taking this boy's uh, food. So I told him, I said, look, you can have my food. And then I, t- I reached and told the other guy, I'm getting ready to hang up. You've been on the phone an hour. Your shirt calls me to be on 15 minutes. Well, when I did right. that, the boy on the side popped the boy behind me in the nose. I turned and re- reached and grabbed him up from the back. When I did that, he kicked at the boy. We fell on my right shoulder. And when I did, I rolled and covered him with my bi- my belly. And when I did that, they stomped and kicked me in my head like they was kicking a bottle for in the street. And I oh just God. kept on going. The guy that was working with me ran off the unit and locked me in when he closed the door shut on me. The security was looking to see what's going on. So the camera, instead of coming through there, they were scared. So I was stuck there. I, I got out the fight. Now, mind you, I got out the fight, jumped across the stainless, grabbed the radio. I didn't know why I grabbed the radio. By that time, I couldn't feel nothing from my head to my breast. Now, oh, my Lord. Uh, after I put the radio down, I, something said, they're killing them. I jumped back across the stainless. I dove back to wedge myself back into the fight, pried them off, covered them up again. They continued to stomp me in my face, my eye, my mouth, my shoulder, my, my ribs. Okay. I jumped up when security finally came, and I was so dazed that the camera was behind my back. My attorneys, the thing, it was so messed up. They said the other side, said that when you you got back up, anybody else, if they were so hurt, they would have been still down there. Well, I'm still going through a somewhat um, memory lapse where I could be driving and out of nowhere. And else once yeah. every blue moon, I will not yeah. recognize where I am. And, oh and you try God. to explain it to your family. They do not feel it because the first thing they said, is I'm, I'm the one down here. <clears throat> my rest of my family in Chicago and different places. But they feel like, oh, girl, get over it. Because you know Chicago, you told me tough as nails. Okay. Yeah. I'm older. I'm 53 now. I understood that then. But right now, you you get into a calm, a more relaxed 
feel you have to worry about who's standing outside to do it and all of that down here. Yeah. You, they do. It is problems. Now, I'm not going to lie. It is problems. But I'm not on that side. I'm on a calm, more mellow. I can handle my own here. But what did so, they do, uh, Jacqueline? What did they do with the boys that uh, were kicking oh, and fighting? Oh, they stayed there. They stayed there until they closed the place down a year later. Oh, my God. They stayed there, and, and uh, uh, the security supervisor, the same boy, kicked him in the groin, and he had to have surgery. They still didn't do anything. So all they do here is put paper on them enough to lock them up for the rest of whatever time the paper the paper sentence is. That's all. You know, these uh, these kids up here are very violent, too. They're very, yeah, very they're violent. Very, uh, very, they're worse than down here. But the ones down here, beating. I keep telling them, that sagging came, okay, when I was in Chicago, I was working at maximum security prison on 26 in California across the white Ooh, building. All right, County. now that, <laughs> that was, they think that they're tough here. I said the sagging came from being in prison when they would call you, you was their woman, okay? <clears throat> sagging yeah. meant this is my woman. You all don't even yeah. know why you're sagging. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I I think you you are you already know then uh what what the other name for yeah. for twenty six <laughs> in California is that we all oh, call no, twenty six in California. Been about, uh, since two thousand five. We all we uh, Kyler, just so you know, we also refer to twenty six in Cal as hell. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's Chicago's own hell. There ain't no yeah. place yeah. worse in Chicago than there. Wow. Wow. Wow, man. I've been out to LA. Um been on the east side. LA, that's rough over there. Have you ever been to the east side? Woo. I've been to Oakland or, and Vallejo. I've never been in LA. Yeah, yeah. it's rough. Boy, you talk you, about you, scary, usually man. usually it's all the violent defenders that are sent to twenty twenty six in Cal. Let me tell you, that place is so corrupt, even a lot of the, the guards are corrupt. I mean, it's like oh, you could, go, you could go in there and get killed. And they turn their back. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. nasty. That's, that's everywhere. That's, they are getting paid for doing nothing, <laughs> literally. Well, Jacqueline, uh, tune in, please, and be a fan. Uh, contact me on Facebook, Kyler Davenport. I am already, and, uh, you know what? I, I think get, you are my... Yeah, thank you. Are my uh, one of my um, Facebook friends? I do yeah, poetry, I get, uh, and my name is Shy Venus. Shy Vina. Well, let me know that you were on the air with me tonight. PM me and leave it so I'll know we were who you are because I have so okay. many people out there, so many platforms. I, I like to keep kind of keep my brain straight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm on already tonight. Already a fan. Uh, yeah, I love if, you all if you already. Find, if you find uh, Kyler Davenport on Facebook, you'll find uh, me, Dave Kelso, on his friends list. Feel free to add me okay. if you want. Uh, Jacqueline, if, if you'd like, would you like me to kind of give you a slightly more uh, positive spin on your current situation to kind of yes, leave, leave you with a, a bit of a perspective on that? Yes, One thing that that I that I've noticed in my life is that oftentimes God will take things away in order to move you into a position that's much better than you could have ever imagined. But because we don't see the full, bigger picture when it's happening, we interpret it all as bad because there's some inconveniences. And because we have free will, we can sometimes attach and get in the way, get in our own way, get in God's way, and not end up at that good that's trying to come through. Because the, the things that no longer serve have to be stripped out of our life because they're in the way of the things that do serve. And then once those are stripped, the things that do serve can come forth. So what I would suggest, if you can bring yourself to genuinely do it, like what I was saying about thanks and appreciation, just be in that state of thanks and appreciation and say to yourself, you know, if I end up out of this apartment, then it's because God is going to provide those circumstances for me that are going to line me up with some place, some circumstances much better, and I yeah. just won't be able to imagine it until I'm looking at it in hindsight. But in the yeah. meantime, Thanks. I'm going to Thank have you. that faith and thankfulness. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyler Davenport on with Jacqueline Kennedy and Dave Kelso, Jay Larson. Uh, if you want to email me, it's dkyler2010 at aol.com. D-Kyler. 
Kyler, thank you, East Coast. Appreciate that. Uh, D. Kyler, 2010 at gmail.com. You can find me for the airport at DestinyRadioNetwork.com. That's Destiny, D-E-S-T-I-N-I-E. Uh, you can Google the station. Uh, also, please, please go over and support United Caregivers of America dot org. Uh, Mary's working very hard over there uh, for a professional association for caregivers, the ones who work in long term care. As well as, uh, thank you, East Coast again. The one uh, it came out a little garbled there, Tyler. A little both garbled. licensed, both licensed and unlicensed, there and we. Go. Uh, we we are out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jacqueline. I will see you guys Thank on you. Facebook. Thank you. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless. We're out of here. Goodbye. Hi, uh, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. Have a good night.